No more day. The Mindset Digital Podcast. Three, two, one. Hey everyone. If you want to get a text message every time we put out a new episode of the Mindset Digital Podcast, all you have to do is go to your phone and text the word MSD Pod. That's all one word, MSD Pod, to 555 888. And we'll shoot you a text every time we put out a new episode. Good times. Shall we begin? From the intersection of social media, learning, and technology, it's the Mindset Digital Podcast. In today's episode, three members of the Mindset Digital team attempt to get creative director Pete Brown up to speed. Let's get to the show. Thanks, Priya. You know, one thing we know about living in a digital economy is that it is driven by an on-demand world. When I need to pay a bill or make a bank transaction, I can just pull out my phone and get it done. I can't remember the last time I bought a stamp. I can order pizza by calling out to my Amazon Alexa. New clothes are delivered to my house every other month. My son has even signed us up for a battery subscription service, which delivers double A's and triple A's every other month, keeping his video game controllers powered. But there still is one very time-consuming old-school task that I do every weekend. I am the one who shops for groceries for my families. It usually takes me around an hour, sometimes longer, to get through the list. And for the past few months, I've been suspiciously eyeing the online order pickup lanes that are starting to appear in front of the grocery stores in the area. Well, quite recently, three of our Mindset Digital teammates checked out their grocery store's online ordering system. There's a terrific detailed review that the three of them wrote over on the Mindset Digital blog. And this week, we pulled them into the studio for a few minutes to talk about what it's like when groceries go digital. Here we go. Is that all you got? Let's begin. We are crowded in the recording studio and some new faces, so I'm excited about this. Three of you all tried online grocery services and wrote a blog post that went up last week on our blog, performing very well, so I thought maybe I could steal some of that thunder for the podcast and we would just talk about the experience. So let me introduce each of you. First, we have Morgan Mulgrew. How's it going, Morgan? It's going great, Pete. How are you? Very good. Uh, you've been on the podcast before. Yes, this is my you. second podcast. That's right. So very good. And uh, you travel a lot. You're in our road show train people on LinkedIn. Am I, am I getting your job? You're getting done? the gist, yes. And now I'm actually starting to do keynotes and other sorts of uh, in-person, face-to-face, client-facing types of communi- communication. Right. That's right. And um, do you still pack up suit? seems like you're always packing up suitcases and boxes when I see you. Luckily for me, we now have Leslie who does most of the equipment packing, but I still have to pack my own suitcase, which is just as difficult. Okay. Very good. Next to you is Angela Solomon, right? Hi. How yeah. are you, Angela? Now, I know what you do because you always put stuff on my calendar and take it <laughs> off and move it around. I mean, I know your sole job's not just to mess with my calendar, but I don't know what we call what you do. Well, I am the executive admin assistant. Okay. Sometimes I'm also referred to as the advanced team leader. I gotcha. And so you are basically managing Deborah's work out in the world, keeping her on the road getting her where she needs to be. Yeah, and I also manage Betsy and Chuck as okay. needed as well. Very good. So then why do you keep putting stuff on my calendar? Because anyone who's in a meeting with those three also becomes okay. part well, of I, my plan. Just for future <laughs> reference, I am book solid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we have Lisa Pence. Yes. Who I know is in the sales organization. Yes. What do you do? I, I should know that. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I know that when... Um, sales leads come in through channels that I sit over, I give them to you. So I assume you have something to do with that. I do. Right. Um, I have a sales background. Um, This role is a client support specialist, which actually works at helping the sales folks. Okay. So I do a lot of proposal writing, um, a lot of training on Salesforce and Salesforce reporting, um, keeping the the sales team taken care of so that they have more time to interface with our clients. I got you. So they're out there shaking hands and going, hey, how's it going? And you are making sure all the paperwork follows them appropriately. Exactly. Yeah, very good. Okay, so uh, who came up with the idea to do the grocery online shopping test? That would be me. Nice, Angela. Sort of. (laughs) 
I'm glad. I'm glad for it because I'll, I'll be honest. I tried this like the very first week it came to Giant Eagle near my house, and I had a terrible experience. So I've kind of written it off. So reading your blog post, which we'll put a link to in the show notes, I think was super helpful. So let's start with you. Where did you go? And, and tell us about your experience. Uh, I went to Giant Eagle. Um, my experience have mostly been positive. I did learn a lesson last week that they do not pull their sale ads after hours when they are expiring that night. So when I got to the store the next day, my bill was $20 higher than I expected it to be. Okay, so you go online and you add all this stuff that you want. Mm -hmm. And if something was on sale, but you don't pick it up till the next day, you don't get the sale price? Right. Okay, so you pay the price at the time you pick it up. Correct. The difficult thing was I ordered at 1130 at night, so there was no chance of picking it up that night because the store was closed. So I did give them some feedback on that, but they made it right. The manager came out and adjusted it down, so. And uh, you stuck with it since you tried it initially? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I find it's been very helpful. I also have three kids. Okay. Um, the youngest is 11, and he's kind of a nightmare to shop with. <laughs> okay. I got gotcha. you. So I do the grocery shopping in my house, and it takes maybe 90 minutes every week. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, it's the only 90 minutes I get to myself. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> I just prefer to do it. I'm just kidding, kids. Tell me about like their ability to choose decent produce. I've actually been really impressed with that. I okay. was skeptical to try it yeah. um, in the beginning. And I've heard rumor that they actually have a separate produce section in the store that they get to choose from. Okay. But all of the produce I have received has been as good or probably better than I would have taken the time to pick out myself. Nice. And so, um, and then you, you pull up and you call a phone number, is that right? Yeah, there's a designated lane in front of the Giant Eagle. You pull up to the sign, and there's a phone number right on it. You call. Usually it's 5, 10 minutes at the maximum, depending if there's people in front of you. Okay. Um, and you're in and out in about 15 minutes. Nice. Okay, and so it's definitely a win for you. Yeah, it's okay. a lot easier. Nice. Okay, so let's talk to Morgan. Now, Morgan, you are single, am I right? Yes. Okay. So I don't have no the three kids, kids that right? I'm dragging yeah. to the grocery store with Which is with nice. Me. It's a diversity of opinion. Right? But I also am what we like to consider a, um, I like the convenience aspect of everything. And grocery shopping to me was one of those things where it was the one thing that you couldn't call ahead and pick up. You yeah. still had to wait in the line. You still had to do the shopping. Whereas it seems that everything else these days has an app or some sort of pickup service to make it easier. I gotcha. So you are really, as a consumer, you're used to kind of this on-demand economy managed through your phone. Yes. And groceries were falling behind. Now, yes. where did you go for, for the article? Uh, I went to Walmart. There's a Walmart that's right by my house. Okay. And I thought in convenience aspects that I would just, you know, get off a long work day. And instead of having to go to the store and spend the 90 minutes that you cherish, yeah. uh, I would rather have that 90 minutes cooking a meal. So yeah. I called them. I set up my list um, the day before and set up my list and went um, on the way home and did this kind of the same thing. They have designated parking spots in the back of their yeah. place. And I called, picked up, and they came right out, yeah. 10 minutes in and out. And the only thing that was a pain was climbing two flights of stairs to drop off the groceries. Yeah. But I didn't have to do the initial process. Nice. And do you do you like to cook? I mean, is that something you do a I lot do. Of? I do like to cook when I'm in town and yeah. when I'm not going to be on a long trip and my fridge is full. Typically, sure. it's empty if I'm going on trips a lot. But if it's full, I typically cook every day. Okay. And have you stuck with, with it since the, the initial trial run? I haven't stepped foot in any sort of grocery store since I tried it. Yeah. So this is the way you're going to get groceries. Yes. It saves me so much money by not going in and doing the uh, impulsive shopping where yeah. you stop by, you know, the cookie aisle and Oreo has a new flavor that you want to try or yeah. need some extra ice cream. Yeah. So it saves me some money. Yeah, I can't imagine what this would have been like if they had it when I was in college because I would just be like, I would like all your hue to pull gold. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just pull up and load all these cases of beer into my car. So You can order beer. Yeah. Is there anything you can't get on it? The one thing I noticed at Walmart compared, and I don't know if this is the same with the other ones, the one thing that disappointed me is I'm a spoiled child, I guess you could say, and I prefer meat out of the deli counter. Yeah. And being living alone, I can't. you can't get anything smaller than a pound, oh, and I yeah. can't eat a pound of lunch meat right. to save my life. So right. that's one disappointing thing. Right. But I've also found alternative things to eat rather than lunch meat that I don't have to go into the store to get, like making pork roast the night before and having that for two more days rather than a turkey sandwich. Yeah, nice. I got you. So if you want something from the deli at Walmart, you got to get a pound, basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Lisa, tell me where you went. Um, I went to Kroger. Okay. Right by my house. Very good. And you have kids too. I have three kids. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, fun fact about Kroger, I looked this up. 
they are the largest grocer in the United States. You know, I kind of believe it because when I whenever I travel, I'll see a Kroger. Yeah, Kroger. And based yeah. in Cincinnati, they're actually the twenty fourth largest retailer in the U.S. too. So, wow. how was your experience at Kroger? It was surprisingly really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my reservations. While the whole idea was very appealing to me a couple of years ago when it first came out, yeah. it took me till now to just try it for the first time. Okay. And and what were your reservations going into it? Um, just that they weren't going to pick out what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, that there had to be a catch. Right. That... Uh, it was going to be a lot more expensive than just going to the grocery store. Right. Okay. I don't know why I had those, but that's just kind of my suspicious mind. What happens uh, if they don't have something that you want? They are up front. They come right to you and tell you uh, right away that they had to, what is the word? Substitute. They had to substitute something. Okay. And what I found is they always substituted up so they would get a better quality sure. of the product. And it would be for the same price. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And uh, actually, uh, one, I had to get my applesauce um, substituted one time, and they went up, and it was on sale. So actually, I got it for a less price than um, what I ordered online. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And you've been satisfied with, the, like, the, the quality of the perishables? I have. Yeah. Yeah, very happy. Um, the meat and the produce were a lot better than what I had thought they would be. That's where I thought I was going to have to just kind of put up with whatever they gave me. But yeah. it was really good. Have any of you wanted something that they just didn't have available that you still had to go into the store and get or go somewhere else for? Nail polish remover. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's that's a good one. Right? Yep. Are toiletries on there? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Uh, other than nail polish remover. So when I did it, it was brand new, and it seemed like it took me a long time to kind of scroll through and pick out what I want. Yeah, yeah, right? But then it saves what you... you it does. Mm-hmm. It does. You can choose your staples from here. And repeat the other orders. thing is, if you're a list maker like I am, yeah. I always go to the grocery store with this lovely list that I say I will never stray from. Right. And then I go to the grocery store and buy 20 extra items. Yeah. But for me, I take the list and I use the search bar. Yeah. And so if I need something that might have more than one brand or yeah. like if I just put, type in shampoo, I do get multiple choices. Or I can type in Dove shampoo and it gives me the specific one that I want. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I know if I go to the grocery store when I'm hungry, I come home with all manner of crazy stuff, <laughs> right? Circus peanuts and candy, candy and donuts, yeah. Or if I bring my son who's 16, right, he just starts throwing tacos in the car, whatever. <laughs> Is there any serendipity to your grocery buying? Are you ever online? You're like, oh, I'll try this. Or are you pretty all three pretty rigorously list bound? I get a lot of the same stuff, but Walmart has a thing that says some things you might like based on what you buy. Uh-huh. So they give you suggestions. So I bought chocolate ice cream once and they suggested a new, bra- a new Ben and Jerry's flavor to me, even though I wasn't eating Ben and Jerry's and yeah. I tried it and it was delicious. Nice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, Walmart's Ben and Jerry's ice cream recommendation algorithm apparently. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Um, you, you know what I found out though with Kroger? You have that Kroger Plus card. Yeah. And um, my online grocery was tied to my Kroger sure. Plus card. So the first time I went in, all of my past purchases came right up. Yeah. So it was really easy to go ahead and get my milk, my eggs, all my state, my Cheetos that I get every week. Right, um, right. So within the first five oh, minutes, I'd say 75% of my shopping was done. Wow. So I just knew your history <clears throat> already. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. that's really nice. Mm-hmm. What about coupons? Giant Eagle, you can hand them in when you go to pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, you can choose when you check out to either pay at that time or yeah. pay when you pick up. I usually pay when I pick up so that I can check things out. Yeah. You can give them any coupons. They pull your Giant Eagle card through. Yeah. Um, so it kind of wraps everything up nicely. Like I've noticed, no, by my house, all three of these um, stores are near me, so I could go to any of them. Uh, but I notice, like, when I go, you know how they, they print out specific coupons for you based on what you've bought? Do they mm-hmm. still do that here? Because sometimes I leave with, like, eight coupons that I'm going to feel bad about ever using. That's yeah, so I so the point of sale... Either. Print, print coupons, not that. Yeah, and at Walmart, they give you a printout. Uh, they email you your receipt. You just sign off on an iPad, so you're not getting an actual paper receipt, which yeah. for me, who hates paper, oh, that's true. I love, but they do. Um, they, and Walmart typically is already discounted, so I typically don't use coupons, so yeah. I'm not very good. But I know that we don't get the printouts with the receipts on them like you normally do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting. Three of you tried it. All three of you want to stick with it. It seems like this really is a, an improved way to grocery shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I do still. 
go to the store because there's yeah. one store I like to go to that does not do it. Right. So I still go there like once a week, but it's just for a few little things. Okay, and so t- t- just tell me the upcharges, what it costs to use this service. Walmart doesn't have any. Walmart they don't even is. have a service fee. So okay. it's basically you go to the gro- – it's as if you were going to the grocery store and you're actually not even allowed to uh, tip their bag boys or whatever you want to call wow. them. Yeah. Um, I tried, and mm-hmm. they wouldn't let – because I felt bad that they didn't get a service sure. fee. So Walmart, actually, it's the same exact price as going into the store. Wow, okay. I don't know about the other two. For Kroger, the first three tra- the first three times there was no fee. Yeah. So then the fourth time there was a four dollar and ninety five cent fee okay. that'll be tacked on, which I think is fair. Sure. I think that's fine. Yeah. Giant Eagle's the same. It's free five, the five first bucks. three, and then it's four ninety five. Yeah. That said, my grocery bill is half of what it was before I did yeah, this, sure. so I'll well, pay the five dollars. That's right. And, and really, in our hyper busy world, right, I should think about the value of an hour of my time, right? It's certainly mm-hmm. well, I make about five bucks an hour here. <laughs> Once it's all averaged out, but but you know, getting getting an hour of time back for five bucks is is a great deal. I don't know why anybody would say no to that. And you don't have to deal with all the people in the grocery store. I mean, not to say that I'm a mean person, but there's always there's always something that happens when I go to the store. It seems that is ridiculously tragic and yeah. dramatic. I guess. I, yeah. You know, there's always that customer that has something that they need, or somebody running around, and it just eliminates all those problems. Yeah. Right. All right. Any anything else about the experience you guys want to share? Anything we haven't touched on? Um, I can. Yeah. Um, what I've started doing is on Monday mornings, um, I will go ahead and just add my repeat items within five minutes and choose a time for Saturday. Uh, that way, I've got Saturday. I put it on my calendar and it's ready to go. Yeah. The remainder of the week, as I kind of think about what is on sale, right? Um, what I want to make for dinner, yeah. I will go ahead and add those items and kind of make my list as I go along. That works for me than sitting down for an entire hour I gotcha. and making my whole list. So yeah, so, that's been so kind of over the course. So that's actually a good way to think about it, too, mm-hmm. because we always were like, what are we going to eat this week? And we try and figure out what recipes mm-hmm. we're making. And the other thing is uh, some of them have very strict time windows. So if you are trying to get your groceries on same day, mm-hmm. um, for example, at Walmart, if you want to pick up, bef- their last pickup time is 8 p.m. If you don't order your food by 10 a.m. that day, which yeah. is still a decent window especially for those of us who are already up but if you are one of those people who wants to do the last minute grocery shopping you do probably need to give yourself 24 hours or at least wake up early in the morning to get same day so you have to order by 10 which is like how you used to have to go to mcdonald's by 10 to get breakfast exactly how i thought of it when i when i did it the first time good well first of all we're going to put a link to pretty detailed write-ups from each of you that was on the blog I, i hope we'll continue to get some good traffic there but i appreciate that you guys did this and i'm really happy to see that it worked out i think i'll give it a try again but we'll just have to see right then because we can do i another do another blog about we'll interview you i know right that's right how's my life changed now that i gave up the 90 minutes i have to myself <laughs> once a week it might be a little bit more crazy yeah it could be it could be so well everybody thanks for coming in i really appreciate it and this um, is not a drill. i guess that's it good times Take care. Repeat, this is not a drill. My thanks to Morgan Mulgrew, Lisa Pence, and Angela Solomon for their time. And do check out the detailed write-up over on the Mindset Digital blog. That's all I've got for today. Briavel? Is that all you got? The Mindset Digital podcast is brought to you by Mindset Digital. We bring workforces up to speed in our fast-forward digital world. If you like the show, please recommend us to a friend or even better, leave us a review on iTunes. It really helps. Have questions, comments, or ideas about the podcast you want to share with our team? Send them to podcast at mindsetdigital.com. Some music in today's show is courtesy of the website audionautics.com and is licensed under a Creative Commons 3.0. Oh, shout.